one of our longest term members, uh, Cindy Koretsky, and he'll be talking about the linguistic, linguistic analysis of the Chinese uh, role in paper making. So welcome, Cindy. I'm not going to have any difficulties uh, with. It's not on. I'll move you over to here. No, he's, no, he's no, got. He's got. He's got. No, he's got. No, he's got, no, he's got you hear me right now? Yeah. He's got I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm wearing. I'm wearing the microphone. Oh, uh, I want to say first that my presentation will be based upon a series of slides, and uh, the the presentation therefore will use an old-fashioned slide projector, and there will be no no delays. <laughs> Uh, as already mentioned, uh, my presentation will be a linguistic analysis of the Chinese role in paper making. Uh, after the uh, talk by Cindy Berga, uh, it's quite important that uh, communication uh, must be uh, precise. Uh, if I talk about something, uh, you must understand uh, in the same way that I understand what I'm talking about. In other words, we, we, we have to have the same definition of what we're talking about. We're talking about paper and handmade paper. I'm not going to define handmade paper to you, but th there's always a, a bit of confusion about what we mean about paper. Uh, you all, uh, for example, uh, the definition I'm going to give you is the essence of paper. The essence of paper is based upon the Chinese invention about 2,000 years ago. What is the essence of that, uh, that invention? The essence of that invention is the very first use of a screen. The use of the screen is the basis of paper making as we know it now in the 20th century. Uh, our large paper-making machines in industry are based upon the invention of the Chinese 2,000 years ago. They make use of a screen. Of course, there are corollaries. If one uses a screen, must one must use pulp. The pulp has to be prepared in such a way that it can be used on a screen. Uh, therefore, a corollary will is that the that the material that's used must be beaten. What is this material? Well, the Chinese use plant material, so I would use plant material as part of the definition. Now, this definition may have to be re uh, revised at some time uh, because one of our members, Gene uh, uh, Gene uh, Valentine, has proposed uh, that uh, silk be considered uh, a paper, uh, and uh, one will have to think that over. But for the time being. Uh, for the time being, I consider paper as plant material, and silk is, is not a plant material, it's protein, it's animal material. Uh, he, uh, of course, Gene uh, uh, Valentine says he does use a screen, and he does meet the material, uh, so that's part of the, the definition. Well, uh, to, get, to get back to uh, my subject, uh, for, uh, it's been agreed for the past uh, 2,000 years that the Chinese invented paper as we now know it. Uh, it's been generally agreed that, the, that one person is, uh, is uh, responsible for the uh, invention of paper making, and that person's name is Tsai Lung. Tai Lung. Uh, however, uh, in, in the past 50 years or so, Evidence has uh, emerged, uh, which uh, uh, which shows that paper was actually used 200 years before the time of Ceylon. So we have to rethink the invention. Uh, there is evidence. This evidence is both archaeological and historical, uh, and uh, it has been suggested that numerous paper makers have been involved, of numerous persons have been involved in the invention of paper. Uh, my talk is going to deal with these various people uh, who have been involved in uh, uh, the uh, introduction, the origin of uh, special methods, steps, uh, techniques, uh, tools, uh, machines involved in paper making. And the, uh, the, uh, the connection 
will be illustrated by slides, uh, slides which I've taken myself in China uh, over the past uh, 25 years, past, uh, past quarter of a century. Uh, during this interval, uh, Elaine Koretsky has, uh, uh, has made a number of expeditions to China, 16 in all, uh, and, on, and I have accompanied her on all of these expeditions, and my role uh, primarily has been uh, documenting uh, what uh, we see, what we find. I have taken the photographs. I'll have to admit, during the past four years, I've not been uh, very good at photography, and uh, the reason why I'm not standing at the podium is because generally I see better with my left eye, and if I have to look at the screen, I, I'm better off standing on this side. Uh, however, I, I hope that I won't have to look at the screen. The first slide has uh, above two Chinese characters, and down below is the Roman transliteration of the two characters. The two characters say Tai Lun. Tai Lun is the man that I just referred to. Tai Lun was an official in the court of the emperor, and in the year 105 AD, he announced the making of paper. The historical records suggest that he used mulberry, he used fishnet, rags, and uh, the rags and fishnet are, are believed to be made from uh, hemp or flax. Early this morning, uh, one of you approached me and spoke to me, and that was Jim, Jim Croft. And he, he himself is making paper uh, using fire hose uh, which is made from uh, uh, flax uh, in much the way that the very early Chinese paper makers used rag. Uh, that I find that interesting. Here is a picture of Sai Lun. He is the person who historically has been touted as the inventor of paper. The next paper maker, Chinese person I, I mentioned, is Kozo. Kozo first introduced a fiber, which the Japanese now call Kozo. The, the fiber is mulberry, and mulberry is a fiber which is widely used in the paper-making world, especially Asia. It goes by many names. As I mentioned, the, the Japanese call it Kozo, but this uh, fiber is also used in many other countries with other names. For example, in Vietnam, the fiber is called Zo. In, uh, in China, it's called Go. In Thailand, in uh, Burma, the fiber is called Sa, very widely used uh, fiber. Uh, you use a Koso yourselves. Uh, I, I want to point out that uh, I'm wearing some Koso. This bow tie is made of Koso. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was dyed red. It was made by one of you, as a matter of fact. She's not here today. That's Marilyn Wall made this about 15 years ago. <coughs> Here's an example of Koso. These are branches from the plant. The fibers have not been processed. These, uh, the bark has been peeled uh, both ways, the outer bark and the inner bark. And it's the inner bark which is the material that's used in paper making. We now come to the uh, next Chinese individual who has a connection with paper making. As, as you can see, uh, his name is in two characters, and the transliteration below in the, in the Roman alphabet is Soki. And here are examples of his connection. <laughs> uh, here, here, here you see the soaking of bamboo fiber yeah. in, in, this, uh, in a pool of water. In paper bank, the person in the front is handling a bundle of bamboo, and in the rear you see a bundle of bamboo soaking. And here's another example of soaking. <laughs> Here you see bamboo floating on the surface in a cooker. The cooker is made of concrete. It's eight feet in diameter, about eight feet tall, and you notice the white material, which is uh, upon the bundles of bamboo. That material is lime. So this is an example of uh, soaking of bamboo in lime. We now come to another contributor. <laughs> His name is Kukin. 
<laughs> and here's a lady who is cooking fiber. The fiber has to be mulberry. She's cooking it in a pot. There's also lime in it. And in this picture, uh, a lady is watching this woman cooking. I took this photograph in 1993 when Elaine and I decided to cross the great Gobi Desert, the great Taklamaka Desert, and travel from one oasis city to another oasis city along one of the old silk roads. The silk road in which we selected was the one that was used by Marco Polo in the 13th century. Well, we travel from one oasis city to another, looking for evidence of paper making, and found none until we came to the oasis city of Otan in the extreme western part of China. And this is what we saw. While we were traveling through the desert, when we were traveling through the Taklamaka Desert, our uh, guide casually mentioned to us what the definition was of Taklamaka. He said Taklamaka means means when you enter this place, you'll never be able to leave it. <laughs> <laughs> Very encouraging. <laughs> well, we've come back to tell, tell you this story. Another example of cooking uh, is, uh, again, this cylinder of concrete. And you see bundles of bamboo, which are cooking uh, in lime. Our next uh, <laughs> individual, has two characters, and his name is Wu Xing. Oh. And here is his linguistic connection to uh, paper making, this particular step. And here you see a paper maker in a pond. The pond is white because he's washing a bamboo bundle of fiber which has already been cooked. What is he doing? He's washing out the line, and as he washes out the line, he also washes out uh, other unwanted uh, ingredients in the live solution during the course of the cooking. Uh, substances such as lignans, pectins, oils, <coughs> resins, heavy cellulose have all been released are, are in the solution. Another uh, example of washing uh, is this paper maker that we saw in Beijing, Beijing near Xi'an in uh, Shanxi province. This paper making is, is washing mulberry fiber, which is uh, in the white uh, bag, looks like a pillowcase, and he's swishing it back and forth in the river. And he, again, he's doing the same thing, washing the lime and all the other unwanted uh, ingredients uh, out of the fiber. Uh, now, the next person we come to is <coughs> P. E. <laughs> Now, now it, 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 this he, 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 he is connected. He is connected with this with the, with this next step that I will describe to you. And uh, it's a step that's not widely used, but uh, in, in the in the passing of bamboo, but in some areas it is. And we first observed this connection when we visited the, the village of Saijiawu in the rural eastern China. We were there in the year 2001. We were there twice. The first time we were there, and we visited this particular village, uh, the paper maker we interviewed, uh, to our surprise, told us that pig urine was used. That's the PE connection. But later on, we made a, vi a, a, a village a, a visit to this village uh, several months later because we had some questions to to uh, to ask the paper maker. We visited the same village with the same interpreter, and we learned that that the that the urine was not pig urine, but was human urine. <laughs> so uh, after getting that information, uh, uh, we approached the whole matter with great uh, skepticism. And the first thing I said after I learned that was, show me how you get it. I want to make sure that we were talking about the same thing. So the paper maker took me to his, to his house, and he showed me two wooden buckets. The one on the left uh, has a capacity of 
seven liters, the one on the right has a capacity of 30 liters. He said the urine was, was collected in the smaller bucket, and when it was full, it was poured into the larger bucket. And when the larger bucket was full, it was carried by cart to the pool where the urine was poured. Uh, he also indicated that uh, the, the urine was diluted in the proportion of one part of human urine to five parts of water. Uh, and he told us that the bundles of bamboo, after they'd been cooked, were placed in this pool and soaked for seven days during the uh, summer months, but 14 days during the winter months. I asked the paper maker where he obtained his, uh, his supply. He said he was supplied by members of his family, but sometimes uh, he needed more urine. So he would purchase it from neighbors uh, who were engaged only in farming and not paper banking. Well, uh, before I left the farmhouse, uh, I made a contribution. <laughs> We now come to another person who made a significant contribution to the process of making paper, and his name was B.T. <laughs> and here are examples of the connection. Uh, here's a woman, this woman is uh, in Hotan, and she's beating uh, mulberry fiber, which is on a large stone slab, and she's beating it with a, with a wood pellet. Another example of, of uh, beating. This beating is done with a large stone wheel, uh, which is pulled in a circle by a cow. And the, the, the fiber, in this case bamboo, is placed under the stone wheel, and the fiber is ground, or it's, or it's beaten. Another example of uh, beating is the use of a foot operated stamper. We saw this, I photographed this in, in Beijing. And uh, Beijing is near Xi'an. And some paper historians uh, believe that this village might have been the very first village where paper was made in China. And that would have been more than 2,000 years ago. At this village, we saw the beating done by a foot operated stamper. And uh, in this slide, you see a bee which is sitting on a fulcrum, and the man on the extreme left is stepping on the beam, and when he does that, the portion of the beam on the right goes up, and that part has the hammer. The hammer head is there. As the man releases, as the man on the left releases his foot, the hammer comes down on the fiber, and the fiber there is bulbary. We come to a, another example of beating. After beating, we are now ready for sheet formation. And uh, a number of Chinese have been involved uh, in the, the contributed to this process. And in the general, as you know, sheet formation may be accomplished by either the method of pouring or the method of dipping. Well, who contributed the method of pouring? Well, this man, a pour in. He, and, and the examples of his connection is shown here. Here's a paper maker who is pouring fiber uh, in a container, a measured amount of fiber. This happens to be mulberry, and she's pouring it upon a mold which is floating in a pool of water. The method of pouring. Another example of pouring. Uh, in this particular case, the the mold is practically floating in air, uh, and the fiber is being poured on the surface of the mold. Actually, the mold, the mold is connected on the right side to, to a pole. We notice this in Diban village in Guizhou province in China. Uh, all these slides are, are slides which uh, were taken in China. Now, I, uh, the second method of sheet formation was contributed by this man, D. Pink. D. Pink, uh, and here's an example of, of his connection. Here is a sheet of paper being produced by the method of dipping. And uh, this mold, uh, as you notice, has uh, two handles. The paper maker dips the mold, 
and uh, in this fold uh, uh, has uh, two parts, um, the fray, which is hinged, and a removable screen. Now, <laughs> now, in the making of paper, uh, paper makers frequently use an aid, and this Chinese individual came up with something which we now call formation aid. Oh. <laughs> Here's an example of a formation aid, uh, which is widely used. Uh, this formation aid is hibiscus manihot, is in, in Japan, <coughs> is called Tororo Aoi. And the root of the plant is used. There are many formation aids. In addition to this, as a matter of fact, there are synthetic formation aids. Now, of course, after the sheet has been formed by the method of dipping, uh, something has to be done. And this man decided on, on what to do with it. His name was Ku Ching. <laughs> and what Ku Ching taught us was this. He showed how we could transfer the uh, bamboo screen, which has a newly formed sheet of paper, to a pile of paper, which is a post. So here's an example of Kuchi. Now, we come to this man who has three characters in his name. <coughs> and his name is Paresing. <laughs> and here we see pressing. This pressing that I photographed here it was also in Beijing village. It's a very primitive uh, form of pressing. You see a long beam, and the, the left end of the beam is fixed. The right end of the beam has three large stones, and the middle of the beam is sitting on a post of paper. <laughs> well, by adding the large stones to the beam, the pressure is produced upon the, the post, and the water squeezed out. This is really a primitive method, and uh, one doesn't see this very often at all. We've only seen it once in China. Another method of pressing. Here, uh, a wooden type of press is used. Again, uh, you'll notice a long beam. The left end of the beam is fixed. The right end has around it a steel cable which is connected below to a winch. So this is a winch type of press. The winch, you notice, is horizontal. It has a number of holes, and a lever is placed in the hole. And when the lever is cranked, the uh, steel cable wraps around the winch, and pressure is produced in the middle where the post of paper is. Again, a primitive method. Here is a uh, more modern method which the Chinese use in, in this step called pressing. And here, a uh, hydraulic apparatus is shown, and uh, this uh, hydraulic lift is operated manually by lever. Now, this man, who also has three characters uh, in his name, and the transliteration is Da Rai Ying, and I'll show you some examples uh, of his contribution. Now here is drying. Now, in this example, the drying is uh, in the air under the sun. You see bowls standing up with the sheets of paper on them. Of course, the paper in this case is, is produced by the method which was uh, originated by the man we mentioned previously, pouring. And here is another example of drying. The paper is brushed on the uh, outside wall of this house, but paper can also be brushed on inside walls, and the paper is dried in the air. Now, this man introduced a variation, another kind of uh, drying, and his name is Hanging. And what, what he proposed was hanging the damp sheets of paper on bamboo poles. And this method, by the way, was introduced into Europe when the paper was first uh, started uh, in Europe. And uh, this method was widely used by hanging damp paper in, in lofts. And uh, another method of drying was introduced by this person. Uh, his name is He Ting. And He Ting suggested that a vertical steel plate, which was undergoing heating, be used as a surface for drying paper. The paper would be brushed 
on the surface, and in a matter of 30 seconds, the heating uh, would cause the paper to be dried. It was then peeled off. We now come to another phase in paper making, and this particular person with, uh, with uh, four characters, whose, whose name in transliteration is Fu de Rene. Fu de Rene was, was, was very important in the history of paper making. In the year 1806, a machine was introduced in France, uh, which the French called a Fu de Rene. And this machine is now widely used throughout the world in modern paper making, machine made paper. And uh, uh, in this machine, by the way, this is the only slide that I did not photograph in, in China. This was photographed in uh, Denmark. This uh, machine is a photo d'air, and uh, the machine is 100 meters in length. The uh, pulp is introduced on the right uh, end of the machine. And, uh, and 100 meters down, uh, the paper emerges as a, as a huge roll weighing several tons. The, the pulp that's introduced is actually introduced by the method of pouring, which is very interesting because it, uh, pouring is, uh, in the uh, history of uh, paper making is considered the original method. That was the method before the method of uh, DP was uh, introduced. So, uh, so here, modern paper is, is being made now the way the Chinese made paper uh, more than 2,000 years ago, method of pouring. So uh, and the paper goes, uh, goes down the line, and it undergoes paracing, and it undergoes doraying, and finally, <laughs> and finally we, we get to these huge rolls of paper. Well, I'm at the uh, conclusion of my presentation now. Uh, I obtained most of my information from one particular source. I sourced it fully you. <laughs> Do you think that I am fully you? <laughs> if you think so, you are correct. Doshi <laughs> Allah, <laughs> which in Chinese means thank you very much. Chinese, but uh, I've learned it by, uh, by the, uh, the, the transliteration that you saw below. They were written for me by a, uh, by a young Chinese friend who was working for his PhD at Harvard at the time by Elizabeth <laughs> Zane. But, but, but the names are all valid names. That is, uh, 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 those names can be found amongst Chinese. Uh, they're, they're not in, they're not imaginary names. They're really real names. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I, I hope that, that even though the presentation was uh, perhaps intended to entertain you, that you learned a great deal because the slides are, they're, they're, not, they're not imaginary slides. They're, uh, they're real slides that I actually took. <laughs> Any, any other questions? Yes. You know, I have one, Sydney. I noticed um, the gentleman that was coaching, he did strike a resemblance to the historical character of uh, uh, Ching. Was he, is that just coincidence, or is he Well, <laughs> well I, 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 I don't know, but I, I, I know that there were long, long lines uh, in these uh, families. Uh, for example, <laughs> the, there were the, uh, the, the, the P.E. Uh, P. family started <laughs> around the 10th century because uh, that was when uh, bamboo was introduced as a fiber. Prior to that time, uh, bamboo was not used as a fiber. So uh, the P.E.s have been doing their thing for a long time. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sydney, there's a rumor circulating in the back of the room that these slides were actually made when they did the moonwalk slides in the Nevada desert. Um, to, to simulate, you know, and, and some of the UFO slides that have been taken. Were your pictures actually done there? Well, I, I will, I will, I will say this: that that rumor is absolutely false. <laughs> I'm going to teach you, of course, no meeting, uh, no dog hunter meeting is complete without a paper making song, uh, which can be done simply. Uh, I, uh, what, uh, you, you, li you listen to music with, with 12 beats to the bar, and this, the, the, the music that I'm going to teach you uh, will be sung to uh, London Bridges Falling Down. Uh, I'll, I'll sing it once for you, and then we'll all sing it together. Uh, I, th I dreamed up the song, oh, a number of years ago, and uh, it goes like this. Washy, washy, I know they, I know they, I know they. Washy, washy, I know they, ah, so deska. Then this refrain is, is repeated. Uh, now, how, how did I get the idea? Well, if you've, been to, if, you, if you've been to Japan and you talk on the telephone, you'll hear the sound, mushy mushy under day. Well, I decided I'd substitute washi washi. Uh, what is washi is paper, handmade paper, uh, in Japanese. And the, the song that we're going to sing together really is a tribute to the Japanese paper makers, our colleagues. So at any rate, I'll, I'll go through the, the first verse again, and, and I'll sing the rest of it, and then we'll all sing it together. So it goes like this. Washy, washy, ah, no, nay. No, it's, it's London Bridge is falling down. Washy, washy, ah, no, nay. Ah, no, nay. Ah, no, nay. Washy, washy, ah, no, nay. Ah, so deska. No, what does ah, so deska mean? Well, what does ah, no, nay mean? Adonai means, uh, you know, washi washi Adonai, it means, oh, listen to me, hear me. And, and asodeska, it means, oh, is that so? Is that correct? <laughs> okay, so let's go through it again now. Washi washi Adonai, Adonai, Adonai. Washi washi Adonai, asodeska. Now, we sing that twice. The refrain is sung again, so let's sing it again. Washi, washi, I don't know, I don't I don't so Now, the next thing we do is we, we proclaim the, the triad of fibers used in Japan. So the next thing we, we do is raise the fist on our right hand and we say, Kozo, Mitsumata, Gampi. And then we, then we say hooray in Japanese, which is bonsai. So after that we say, bonsai, bonsai, bonsai. Okay, now let's, let, this is the, 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 we've already done the rehearsal, now we do the performance. Okay. Let, together. Washi washi adone, adone, adone. Washi washi adone, aso deska. Now we repeat it. Washi washi adone, adone, adone. Washi washi adone, aso deska.